Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the part 2 of the ongoing video series on bearing power diagnosis. So in this part, uh, I am going to show you how to pre-process the data set that we have, that we have already made and uh, how we can use this data set to train some kind of machine learning model or artificial intelligence in order to do the fault prediction. Okay, so let's proceed. This is the basic some uh, basic library that I have imported for plotting and operations. Then I imported the data set that we have created last time. So one new thing you can see here is I have uh, like labeled this data 0 HP. Like this is for the zero fault condition. In the previous video that, uh, that we have already saw that uh, there are four load condition, total four load condition. 0 load, load 1, load 2 and load 3. Alright. So uh, previously I uh, showed you in the previous video how to create the data set and pre-process it for the 0 load condition. Uh, similarly, you can download and pre-process the data set for load 1, load 2, load 3 condition. In the way I have done it is uh, yes. So what I have done here is I have created this two folder, the this four folders, each corresponding to different load condition, and in that one I have all the uh, classes or the all the fault classes of bearing with different severities. That is it. So first I imported the zero fault condition, like a zero load condition. Okay, now comes the main part: segmenting the vibration signal into small portions using a window, window size or window length. So before we dab into the code and see, let's give, let me give you an overall idea of what it is. Okay, so for the starting, how we are going to pre-process our data, initially we will take the acceleration data, this, is <coughs> this entire part is our acceleration data and uh, then we are going to take this window length. Suppose this, this will be our window length that you can choose according to yourself. In this case, I am taking 1000 to be my 1000 instances to be my window length. Next steps. Okay. This is the, this is the window length. All right. So I am going to take this data as, uh, so this will be my input to the neural network at one time. I will again show you. And uh, how am I going to proceed after that? I'm going to slide this window. So that is why it called the sliding window method. So in the next step, this is this is what it's going to be for the first case. Then it will be for the ne next time step. So it slided along this direction. And this that is what I'm calling the strike. So whichever part it is jumping on like the, this part it's called the stripe. You can also change the value of stripe according to yourself. If you increase the value of stripe, you will have very less number of uh, training data. There is one thing to look up to. All right. Now let's see how we are going to train it using uh, how we are going to use this uh, data to our neural network. So once this uh, so this will be our input at one instant. Then I'm going to convert it into a uh, column or row vector something like this this is just a row this is just a row of vectors then I'm going to use that at, as my input to the neural network and uh, my uh, during the training process and my output is will uh, will be various fault condition suppose I have 14 kind of fault then it will be uh, 1 1 0 0 up to 14 uh, like 1 cross 14 vector that will be my output accordingly I will train this accordingly I will train my neural network where my input will be this uh, the length of the uh, the length of this vector and uh, my output will be the fault condition whichever fault condition suppose this belongs to the a normal condition then that will be my output of the neural network that's how i'm going to train my neural network all right and similarly now now my 
the window side is this window size or the input signal is this and accordingly it will go on changing now i hope the overall idea of the segmentation of the vibration signal is clear using the window method so we can proceed and see how the code works first i'm importing two uh, variables one is label encoder and then two categorical this label encoder will take the uh, fault names the text or the string names and give it some number like 0 1 2 3 and then two categorical will convert it into a one hot encoded vector is that and uh, I'm taking my window length to be 1000 instances and stripe to be 200 as I have shown in my previous uh, presentation. Okay, so first I'll initialize my two empty array x and y. Then, then I'll use this for loop to segment my data. And how does that happen? Okay, these are the total uh, fault classes present in my data frame okay so now let's see I'm but now I'm going to only select now I'm going to only select the fault labeled 14 ba that means for 14 means ball, ball fault so initially my data frame was looking like this with the acceleration data here and fault label here now it will look like this so now I have only extracted the acceleration data for the um, fault uh, for this particular fault okay then I'm going to do the window length like I'm going to segment it using the window length for that I'm going to use a for loop and in that one and in the for loop I'm going to make a list which will have the starting at zero and it's uh, and it will go until this value and stride is my step size that I'll I'll jump with the I'll jump from one value to other value according to this stride. Okay, now now I'll append the temp array in my x value and corresponding fault value in my y y array. Okay, if I do np dot shape of x, it has um, it has one row and thousand columns for now. Okay, and x is right now a list. Similarly, I'm going to use this uh, uh, bigger for loop which will iterate through each and every fault present here like this and uh, append their corresponding value in my x and y uh, variable. Then I'm going to uh, reshape. First I'm going to convert into a numpy array and then reshape according to my requirement. The reshape is nothing but uh, this, this will have number of instances and this will be my window length. My label value is there just y then I'm going to do encoding of that and then convert it into a one ha one hot encoded vector finally I'll run this one my x dot shape will be this number of samples and each having a dimension of thousand then comes the splitting the given data set into training and test I'm um, keeping 30% of data for the test now visualizing the data using TCME before using auto encoders. All right. So uh, this is my input data to the neural network, and this is my neural network. So before I do any pre-processing to this uh, data, in, right now my x my x has m m samples, and each sample has 1,000 dimensions. You can say that. I want to do a dimensionality reduction of this using TSNI. So, first, before doing any pre processing of the raw input vibration data, I am going to do a TSNI of this and see if the data, if the TSNI data is distin distinguishable. This is not for this data, I will show you in the Jupyter notebook whether this data is distinguishable or separable or not. So, once this is done, then I'm going to train my neural network on all the all the input data, and then and then and then pass the pass this input value through my neural through my neural network, and whatever the output value I'll get from penultimate from the this uh, penultimate uh, layer, I'll use that 
do uh, again do a plot of T sin and see whether that part of whether that T sin is uh, separable or not because once the model is trained and we are doing a classification task so it should be able to learn and categorize the input uh, data from different fault labels into different segments this is also not a part uh, of the actual one so i'll show you that in the uh, jupyter notebook so i hope this is clear then uh, doing the tc for that so for that for here suppose i have 128 uh, hidden neurons here then my shape will be okay i hope this is clear and this will be more clear once i will show the code implementation now i have given an overview of how we are going to visualize the data and see their dimensionality reduction performance let's see what is the code has to offer at the first line i am just copying the whatever my x data was there this x data into another variable called x pre ann the tc function or the class and then i am um, i'm going to make an instance of this uh, class using n components equal to 2 learning rate auto per, uh, per perplexity 40 and the number of iteration 30 then i am using this to fit and transform my input data into and the variable i am storing is it in as called as xt snake so my xt snake will have only two array two columns uh, as i am uh, doing the dimensionality reduction into two dimensional space then i am creating a data frame using this data for my first column name is tsne component one and tsne component two for the second one and to do a good plot and see the categorization i'll make another column in this data frame called tsne df fault and that will be the value of y what is y y is the number of uh, the name of the faults okay then i'm just going to use uh, c bond to do the plot before going ahead let's see how the data from tcn data frame looks like this is the first principal component of tc then tc component 2 and all the faults are here okay let's see the plot before doing any kind of training okay this is how the plot looks like and you can see that the all the faults are mixed in between and there is not a clear distinguish dis, like we cannot linearly or non-linearly separate them we need a, at least one or two more dimensions to see that so we can conclude that you before doing um, before like the raw vibration data is not separable for different kind of fault as well okay so let's proceed next step we are going to train our neural network model for that First, we need to create it. To create one, my number of classes will be uh, say equal to the number of faults, which will be saved here encoded dot classes. Then building a model. First, I will uh, start the graph or sequential. This sequential function will start the graph. At the first layer, I have uh, one zero two two four neurons. And my input shape is same same as the x shape which is window length in this case i'm using a railway activation the next layer like next layer i have 512 then 256 then 128 and finally i have my classes number of classes at my last layer last layer and in the last layer i'm using softmax activation so that that was all about the layer neural network model or architecture and using Adam optimizer loss is categorical cross entropy and matrices are accuracy so this is how the data set uh, like the model looks like and we have total 17 lakh parameter to train on then i'm just going to uh, fit the data my x train y train are my uh, training data i'm doing it for 50 epochs batch size is 500 and do shuffling is true that means before uh, each uh, before each epoch my input data or the x train y train will be reshuffled validation data i'm using x test and y test right. so first we'll create the model 
then now that the model has been trained you can see that it has 99% uh, accuracy on the training data and on the validation data it has 96.77% accuracy if I do a plot okay this is not bad this is pretty good training there is a little bit of uh, overfitting we can say but it's okay so finally we are able to get 96% accuracy on the bearing data set to do uh, to see the confusion matrix uh, I mean using this function so what it will do the prediction the my, here my prediction of the neural network will be one hot encoded vector so first it will convert it using the arcmec function to a uh, label encoded vector or in the value of 1 2 3 4 5 then I will do the inverse transform using encoder to find the corresponding label of, uh, for that uh, prediction so this is the function for that then I'm going to use my test data to do the predict and that will be saved in my y print after that I'm going to inverse transform result function to do the inverse transformation of this y print value to its corresponding label which will be capital y print and this is for the actual this is the actual one and this is the prediction one. To, to visualize the confusion matrix, first I'll import the confusion matrix. I'll, I'll instant. I'll decide the size of my figure, then confusion matrix with the test uh, like the actual data and prediction data, and keep normalize equal to true. Then using C1, I'm plotting this confusion matrix. Okay, so this is how our confusion matrix looks like. One good thing is that is uh, the normal data here has high like 100% accuracy, which is a good thing because if abnormal data will be categorized will be categorized as normal data, that will be a bigger problem because our model is not able to predict the fault. But here that is not the case, and the model is fairly good in predicting the separating between normal data and faulty data. But there are some misclassification in between the in between different types of fault. So as uh, here you can, uh, you can see. still it is not much. Then in the next step, I'm I'm going to use this neural this trained neural network, and I'm and I'm going to uh, input my data through this print neural network and use only this 128 neurons value to plot another TCNI uh, plot and see if now it is separable or not. Before as we saw the data is not separable or it is not uh, in different parts. So yeah, uh, there is a big mix mismatch here. But let's see once the model is trained, is it able to classify or group the data in different, different uh, regions at least. For that what I am doing, I am creating a new model, the input is same as my uh, current model but the output will be the but, but the output will be the penultimate layer of this model. So let us see, ok so my y vis means y visualization has uh, this number of instances and uh, th this is the shape of each uh, variable so i need to convert this one into two uh, into two like i need to reduce this 128 dimension into two dimensions only so for that i will pass this data into this function this is just to plot the tc that i have shown previously and let's see now while passing through the neural through the trained neural network, we can see there is a clear categorization or clear separation between different types of classes. That means our neural network is properly trained and it is able to classify different kinds of fault. And we can see there is barely any there. You can see a very small overlap here, but except for that, it's fairly good. Okay, so that is all about this particular video. 
uh, where we have did the implementation of the neural network for bearing fault diagnosis without doing any pre-processing on the input raw data we directly fed the raw vibration data into the model which is a good thing because uh, that uh, reduces our computation cost as well as expert uh, knowledge you don't need expert knowledge in this case what i would like you to do is uh, the entire thing i did for the zero fault classes or zero hp classes i would like you to do this for the one hp classes one um, the load condition for one hp two hp and three hp as well and see if there is some uh, vari some variation or not okay see you in the next video